One of the IT stories I like to tell my students has to do with the time I got called by a call center. So you know those call centers that call you up and try to sell you stuff that you may or may not need. And uh, the president of the call center called me up and he was pretty angry. He was you know, really upset. He, uh, this is uh, up in Vancouver, Washington. And what this call center did was they resold uh, satellite dish TV. But they didn't use just regular employees, they used prisoners. So what they would do is they would bring prisoners in, you know, people who uh, had committed crimes, were in jail. However, they had this uh, special deal going where they could go work during the day and then go back to jail at night. So you may not even realize that uh, a lot of times when these call center people call you, they're not uh, regular employees, that they really are criminals. And sometimes you give your credit card number to these people and they can memorize that credit card and use it when they get back to prison. They can do other things, uh, create other crimes, things like that. So definitely it's a risk whenever one of these people call you from these call centers to give any kind of information to them. And they're trying to convince people to move off the cable and go to satellite. And uh, I guess they were pretty good at it because they had probably about 50 people in there, 50, 50 prisoners in there that were on this work release that were all making phone calls. And so the, the guy called me up and he said, hey, you know, these guys are killing me because here's what's happening. Uh, they are uh, go calling in to all these people. And then somewhere around 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, they decide they're going to uh, shut the server down. So they, they're using a product called Remote Desktop from Microsoft uh, you know, Windows Server, and they're remoting into the server, and then they would shut the server down, and then they would take this bus, as you see here, back to prison at about 5 o'clock. The, the deal was, however, that once they shut the server down at about 2 or 3 o'clock, they could go out and commit crimes and do all different kinds of things and say they were really at work and then they would go on the bus back to prison and have uh, plausible deniability as, as we like to say. So this is a real problem. Problem not only for the community, a problem for this, uh, this business, it's also a problem for people that they called. And it's not really about the people that they called which this particular video is about. This video is about how to keep guest users, in this particular case, these employees, uh, from shutting down the server. So this happens a lot where people just end up with way too many administrative rights than they should have. So did I take the job? Yes, I took the job, but I took the job on one condition. And that was that they never tell anybody who it was that came and fixed it. Because you know a lot of these guys would be out of prison soon, and who knows if they'd come after us. So he agreed that they would never mention who it was that they came over and fixed it. And so I came up with this plan to come in after hours, after all these guys have gone back uh, to Betty Bay in, in prison, and I brought in a team of my employees, and we went into group policy. And in group policy, we locked down what the, what the, uh, the prisoners or workers could see and do. Uh, so what happens is, is, is they would normally get a full desktop. They would log in, they get a full Windows desktop, just like you'd see on any computer. And they had complete administrator rights to everything. So what I did was I said, okay, only two applications are going to launch when they use remote desktop to remote into the server. One application is going to be the phone call product that they need, and the other is going to be Internet Explorer and they didn't allow other web browsers or anything. So the Internet Explorer had to be further locked down so only a specific, two specific websites could be opened. So that way they could not go out and, and visit adult sites as they had been doing uh, or other scamming sites and things like that. So the uh, worker would log in, they would only see these two web pages and they would see this one application and that's it. Uh, they wouldn't get to see anything else. And so my team went in, we took care of this, and the next day um, I came in, uh, you know, 
just basically to stand in the back of the room to see what would happen. And sure enough, the workers would come in, they logged in, and they were so mad. They could not do anything other than their job. And uh, so I stood in the back of the room and pretended like I was just another worker there. I didn't actually do anything. Uh, but everything worked exactly as it should. The owner of the company was super happy uh, that they, they no longer had this issue of them you know, shutting things down. Um, unfortunately, the uh, the owner of the company, president of the company that called me, uh, did not take all of my advice, however, and that was, I said, you need to properly back up, you know, your, your servers and your network, all these different things. Uh, so I did get a call about two years later, uh, begging for help because, uh, for some reason his server had shut down because the, of a mechanical issue. His hard drives went bad and he had no backups. So unfortunately, I was unable to help him <laughs> beyond uh, taking the hard drives out and, and getting them, uh, you know, partially recovered from a service that does that kind of thing. Uh, but uh, make sure you do your backups. So I wanted to show you how it is that you can go in and you can lock down people from being able to do things when they log into your server. First, I want to show you how to add users into our remote desktop setup. So you go into Control Panel, and then you'll go into System. And then that's followed by remote settings. And then here's where you can allow remote connections to happen. I definitely recommend you leave the network level authentication turned on because that does add extra security. And you click on users, here's where your allowed users are now added. And so you can see domain users are already in here, but you can create uh, groups, say, in this particular case, what I did was I created a group for the regular staff, such as the executives and the owner and things like that. Then I created another group for the staff that would come in from the prison. And so I just added those as two separate groups. And in the old days of, say, Windows 2000, 2003, you could then use group policy to lock it down. But in newer versions, such as in 2016, 2019, you can do this using a web version. So if I go into remote desktop services, which are already installed on the server, now I have a, a video that shows you how to do this from the beginning to the end. I'll put in the comments for you so you can check that out. Then we can go into what's called a collection. And inside a collection, you can see that you can add specific different applications in that collection, and then you can assign it. You see under user group, you can assign it. In this case, it's domain users. But what you'd want to do is create two collections, one collection for one group of users that gets all access to everything, and then another collection that gets access to just specific applications. And that would be the, the uh, group that you don't trust quite as much. So you'd say, this is just what you need to do your job, and that's it. Nothing else. No shopping, nothing you know else that's non-business related. And then when the users log in, they would get just the applications to which they were assigned. So let's see what that looks like. Remember that we only have these three applications that should show up for domain users. So if it's not in there, they can't do it on the server. Here's the website that points back to file server one. And you can see in the URL, we have file server one. Now I have port 444 only because I already have something else using 443. So that's why I had to have that. But then after that, you have RD web. And when you put in the name of the server slash RD web, then you get a web page that looks exactly like this. So we log in. And look at that, we only see the three applications for which we're assigned, and we can't open up anything else on the server except for those three applications. So I'll click, for instance, on Calculator, and we'll click Open. And the first time you connect, you have a little bit of extra authentication, but after that, it does it automatically. And click OK. And then your calculator will then open right up. And here is my calculator. Now, if I go down to the task bar, you can see this little icon of the calculator. And inside the icon, you see a little circle with some green arrows on it. So that tells me that's not being opened on the local computer. So for instance, if I go into uh, the search box and type in calculator and open that up, yeah, it looks similar, but you see there's a bar around the one for remote desktop, and you can see that the icons look different in the taskbar. So we know that this one was opened up locally, and this one is opened up on the server. But the point is, is that you're able to lock down security. So no one can shut down the server anymore. No one can launch applications they're not supposed to go to. 
You can even have web browsers that can only go to specific websites. You can lock that down as well in uh, using remote desktop. So lots of different things and ways you can secure your server nowadays, which is even easier than when I did it for this particular customer because uh, we're allowed to use the web version instead of just the full desktop version.